So at Not The Worst Mom just posted a video about how she took her daughter who was 16 to get her first pap smear and gynecologic exam uh, and uh, by manual exam or internal exam. And the office staff was really confused because the, her daughter's only 16 and they told at Not The Worst Mom we don't do pap smears until age 21, which confused at Not The Worst Mom because she thought that she was supposed to take her daughter to do all of this at age 16 or when she was a teen. And to sum it up, uh, we don't do pap smears until age 21. The reason for that is that we now know how cervical cancer develops and that it takes years for cervical cancer to, de to develop and that teenagers have a very low risk of developing cervical cancer. Um, so that pap smear is not needed until age 21. And those guidelines changed. Are you ready for this? Those guidelines changed from every year to age 21 in 2009. 2009. And the pap smear is not needed until age 21, regardless of whether or not the individual is sexually active. This is also uh, the same recommendation for the internal exam or what we call a bimanual exam. It is not done until after age 21, um, unless there is a medical reason to do one. Now the first gynecologic visit or visit to the OBGYN should occur between ages 13 and 15. And that's to start the con conversation about sexual and reproductive health. Now, this is a great infographic put out by ACOG on 21 reasons to see a gynecologist before you turn 21. And it's not necessarily, doesn't mean that you're going to get a pelvic smear or a pelvic exam or internal exam, but there are multiple reasons why um, a, a teen might need to see a gynecologist. And here are a few. Uh, to learn about healthy lifestyles, um, to learn if you have a urinary tract infection, get treatment for any vaginal itching, discharge, or other symptoms, to talk about periods and whether or not they're normal, to talk about sexuality and relationships, um, and even to learn about sex if there's a, also if there's a concern for pregnancy, and to get education or screening for sexually transmitted diseases if needed. Now, another reason is to get the HPV vaccine, which is highly recommended. It's made a huge difference in the incidence of cervical cancer, so be sure to discuss that with your pediatrician or OBGYN as well. Now, the new guidelines for getting the pap smears at age 21 are one of the biggest accomplishments and changes we made in healthcare in my field that I can think of since I've been practicing. When I was training between 2000 and 2004, we were still doing the pap smears on anyone who became sexually active every year. And of course, a lot of those teens had abnormal pap smears and were getting LEAP procedures, cold knife cones, colposcopy, biopsies as teenagers. And I would be in LEAP clinic doing these procedures on teenagers all day long, multiple times a month. So the changes in guidelines for starting pap smears are a huge accomplishment.